basically it's a tournament where all the best players in the world from different countries and everything come in the same room and play the game that we all love. I am Jace Spiller. And I am Stoneforge Mystic. It's just a really amazing game. It's just mind-boggling to even think about. I guess the rest is history. Star City Games Open Series is an open event. It happens uh, various weekends throughout the year. Anybody can enter, and they have Standard on Saturday and Legacy on Sunday. We have coverage, and you can watch all weekend long. You can watch Magic coverage, so it's kind of something where you can either come and play, and if you can't make it, you can watch on SCG Live. Today we have the Star City Games Legacy Open in Cincinnati. Legacy used to be a format where it was kind of, there were occasional Legacy Grand Prix. Maybe at Worlds there would be a featured Legacy portion, but we've got Legacy tournaments happening almost every weekend. Whenever I play any format that isn't Legacy, I think to myself, I wish I was playing Legacy right now. It's the most balanced and diverse in that you also get to play really powerful cards like Brainstorm. and. Cards like Brainstorm allow you to kind of control your own destiny where you don't really lose to bad draws as much. You have more cards to kind of control the games. Rarely do you get to see like people playing Emrakul on turn two. And it, it's fun uh, in Legacy when stuff, just crazy things happen. You never know what to expect in Legacy. It's a lot of fun. I think what makes Legacy so much fun is kind of the diversity. And it's a very cyclical kind of metagame. Meaning that uh, the decks that are doing well, they're, they're usually very good decks. But there's so many cards. There's, it's such a large card pool. There are numerous answers for those decks. So everybody starts to kind of pack those answers in their sideboard. And those decks become just not as good because they have targets on their back. And new decks, you know, get better. And what happens is everybody sort of forgets about those other decks that were at the top. And then they, you know, the, the hate cards disappear and they come back. So you see things like Reanimator and Dredge and Counterbalance and Zoo and, and Goblins and all these different decks that at any point in time could be terrible or could be the best deck in the format, just kind of depending on what else is going on around it. And it's a format where players can basically show up with any deck that they, they really love, they really enjoy playing, and it can certainly do well at any given weekend. This weekend I'm playing Elf Combo. You get to draw lots of cards. Drawing cards is awesome. Uh, you get to attack with lots of creatures, which, is, which can be awesome. Actually, it's not really a combo deck. It's a mid-range deck first and a combo deck second. Most people don't know that. The main interaction in the deck is Wirewood Symbiote, which is by far the best card in the deck, and the win condition, how you actually physically win games. I use Mirror Entity. Mirror Entity, you can just play on turn three, and then next turn, activate it for five and attack with a bunch of dudes and kill them. And you always kill your opponent when you combo off with Mirror Entity the turn you win anyway. The actual going infinite with it though, there's two ways to do it. The first way is with a Nettle Sentinel, Heritage Druid, and a Wirewood Symbiote. And you need one mana on your pool. You use the Mirror Entity for one, turn all your dudes into elves, which turns your Symbiote into elf, which lets him bounce himself. So you tap three, add three green mana to your mana pool with the Nettle Sentinel, the Symbiote, and one of the other two guys, either the Mirror Entity or the Heritage Strip. Have the Symbiote bounce himself and untap whichever guy you tap to make the mana. Replay the Wirewood Symbiote, which untaps your Nettle Sentinel, and then activate the Mirror Entity again for one, and turn them all into Elves again, and just re rinse and repeat. You'll net plus one mana every time, make infinite mana. Eventually, you can just use their Symbiote. Instead of making mana, you'll lose one mana, but if you have infinite mana at that point, it doesn't matter. To untap all your creatures that were already in play that turn, which is usually about three or four, and then activate your Mirror Entity for like 150, a Googleplex, whatever and attack for the win. I'm not gonna pretend like it's the best deck in the format and you're gonna break the metagame with it like maybe a little while ago when it had its niche in the format, but right now it's a little weaker. But it's still super fun to play and it's really fun. Today I'm playing uh, Mono Blue Control. It, it kind of is focused around two cards, Energy Field and Trinket Mage. There's a lot of little synergies and a lot of uh, one-ofs in the board for Trinket Mage. For the deck, it actually does its best at not losing. You use Vendillion Click and Shackles are your, your main win cons. I've always loved Mono Blue Control. Like, I have the cards for it. I don't have many other legacy cards, so I'm always just brewing to make Mono Blue good. And this is uh, the concoction I came up with this weekend. My one thing is I have a sideboard of 12 different cards, and a lot of them are Trinket Mage targets, so it's never really redundant. You have a totally different game plan against every deck, so you get to play a different style a lot. So it, it never really gets old. You get to play different 
you know, just ways. Like you're not following like an algorithm the same game every time. You you have to you kind of you play really reactively and adjust to what they do. It's it's fun. Gets well positioned right now in the meta. Last I checked, one of the other players playing Zoo was 3-0 in the tournament. I'm through one right now. I haven't checked to see how he did after this round. It's a very solid deck. It's consistent. It's also a good deck to loan out to your friends that don't play a lot of Legacy since it has a very linear strategy and doesn't have a lot of like weird things that it does. Typically turn one, you want to play like a Plateau and then a Steplinks. Turn two, the ideal in this build of the deck would be um, you play another Steplinks off of that same Plateau. You play a Fetch Land. You crack the Fetch, get a Taiga. Uh, cast Reckless Charge on the Steplinks you just played and you swing in for a lot. I had actually planned on playing it back a couple months ago when they first announced the Cincinnati Star City Open. And in a way, I was kind of disappointed to see it win the previous two Star City Opens because now it was on everybody's radar. But by that point, I'd already committed to it. It's primarily one and two drop creatures, usually around 13, 14 of those. And then the rest of the deck is 28 burn spells, comparable in most ways to a Lightning Boulder better. As far as lines of play, it, it can be a little more complicated than people think. If you make any misstep with the deck, you will lose. But straightforward and not a whole lot to think about as far as uh, your game plan. Red deck, and particularly burn, it's the definition of a metagame deck. If the metagame doesn't respect it, then it can creep up and take down even the top decks. And it actually has good matchups against some of the more popular decks. So when people forget about it, they don't have nearly as much sideboard hate, they don't have as great a plan against it, then you can come in with a burn deck and just wreck face with it. I like Legacy because Legacy has so many card options that you can fight a lot of things a lot of different ways and it always seems to adjust with new cards. It's just kind of a great gathering of players. Everybody kind of having fun, playing Magic, playing the formats that they want to play. It's, it's, a, it's a great, great experience.